complexity classes. So we have complexity classes. We have class P. Now class P is easy. That's the set of problems that can be solved in polynomial time. That's problems that can be solved in polynomial time. Now examples, the examples are all the problems that we have studied in this course except yeah, except 0, 1, knapsack, and subset sum, and TSP. Okay, so these are the only three problems that are MP-complete, are not solvable in polynomial time. Everything else we studied in this course is solvable in polynomial time. So that includes sorting, uh, single source, shortest paths. Uh, it includes uh, minimum spanning tree, uh, fractional knapsack, Etc. Okay. Now the other class is class NP. Now class NP is the set of problems that can be verified in polynomial time. Problems verified. Now, problems that can be verified in polynomial time, you know, that includes example subset sum and TSP decision. <coughs> okay. Now, the question is if a problem belongs to P, does it belong to NP? Yes, yes. yes it does. Because, in fact, Solving a problem is harder than verifying a problem. So, you know, there are problems like subset sum and TSP decision that cannot be solved in polynomial time, but can be verified in polynomial time. So solving a problem is harder than verifying. If a problem can be solved in polynomial time, then you can do the harder thing, which is actually solving it. Then if you can solve it, you can easily verify it in polynomial time. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, for example, uh, <coughs> you know, verifying, uh, if you are, if we're talking about the single source shortest paths problem, single source shortest paths problem that we solved using uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, okay? So if someone gives you a path and someone gives you a proposed solution. It tells you that this is the shortest path from S to A. So someone proposes a certain path. Uh, so can you verify that this path is indeed optimal in polynomial time? Yes. Yes. yes, you can, because you can just solve the problem in polynomial. So if you apply Dijkstra's algorithm in E log V, so E log V is certainly polynomial time. So if you can solve the problem in E log V using Dijkstra's algorithm, it will give you the optimal solution. And if you know the optimal solution and someone gives you a proposed solution, you can verify that that proposed solution is legal. And then you look at the cost of that proposed solution and you know the optimal because this problem is uh, easy enough for you to solve in polynomial time. And if the optimal solution is 10 and the proposed solution you know, is te at 10, then it's, uh, it's indeed optimal. If it's more than 10, then it's not optimal. Okay. So if a problem can be solved in polynomial time, it can certainly be verified in polynomial time. So <coughs> this means that 
uh, this means that the relation between P and NP is P is a subset of NP well we will see that uh, you know P and NP could in fact could be the same set but uh, for now we can say that P is has the easier problems which is a subset of the larger set which is NP the problems that can be verified in polynomial time so here you will have problems like TSP decision <coughs> and subset sum you have these problems here they belong to NP they can be verified in polynomial time but they cannot be solved in polynomial time okay so if someone gives you a proposed solution you can verify if it's indeed a solution that meets the target but uh, there is no polynomial time algorithm that given an instance of the problem determines if there is a, a solution that meets the target or not there is no algorithm that can decide uh, this problem now <coughs> uh, the, the third class is class MP complete class MP complete are and we're still defining these informally so later in this lecture we will define MP completeness formally but informally the, these are the hardest problems in NP what do we mean by the hardest we mean that every problem if we can solve one of them we can solve all the problems in NP so now this may sound weird and it will it will not make much sense until we you know present the concept of reducibility which is in fact the main concept that we will be focusing on today so it uh, a problem is NP complete if any problem in NP is reducible to that problem now what is reducible so we will be spending most of the lecture or the rest of the lecture explaining what reducible means so the hardest problems in NP uh, all problems in NP or you know X is NP complete if all problems in NP are reducible to X so now what is reducible by the way this relation between P and MP could look differently so we'll get uh, you know we will revisit this and see that uh, the relation between P and NP uh, could be different as we will explain later but now let's try to understand what it means for what reducible means 